I have Pavel Gresha here. Pavel works on the Micron team uh, at Oracle Labs, or maybe at Oracle. Pavel, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm well, thanks. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Uh, we have two major topics today. Two major topics today. Two major topics today. Two major topics. Micronaut in the Kubernetes, which is for me a very exciting topic because I know a little bit about Micronaut and I know much less about Kubernetes, right? So, so it's it's we're gonna explore this combination. So we're gonna try to build some services and we're gonna try to put them into Kubernetes and we're gonna build the services using Micronaut because it's a very cool application framework and because we have Pavel here who is an expert in all things Micronaut, uh, putting you on the spot like that. Uh, and yeah, and he 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 has been working with Kubernetes uh, for at least a little bit. So he will try to teach me some things and I will try to learn and hopefully this will be useful for other people as well. Right, so Pavel, right? Tell me maybe a couple of lines, a couple of sentences about what you do at work and how you stumble upon this uh, particular combination of Kubernetes and Micronaut. Yeah. So first, uh, thanks for invitation, Oleg. That's that's definitely in place to uh, thank you for this. Uh, opportunity to basically, you know, present to you my pronoun and what what I do. Well, as you said, I'm, I'm uh, I work in Oracle, uh, in specifically the Oracle Labs, where we are uh, trying to develop the best microservices framework with uh, Graham Rocher. I believe he was your guest uh, also a few times before, so I believe that I think the, the listeners are uh, aware who is this guy. So I work with him, and, and it's quite a it's uh, quite a challenge, and also it's uh, a lot of fun to work with Graham. Uh, and yeah, how I ended up well, of you know, uh, there are uh, moments in your life when you know that uh, something interesting is going on, you know. And, and uh, I met Graham, and he just told me like he would like to work with uh, Micron out you know, in in Oracle and. And uh, he asked me whether I would like to join, so I joined, uh, etc. So I'm now uh, working on Micronaut for a year, almost a year. It's a lot of fun. Uh, as you said, I was uh, working with uh, Kubernetes uh, before in my previous uh, roles. So uh, Kubernetes is not um, it's not something I didn't know before. So um, what I'm trying to do now is to like take all my experience from using Kubernetes to Micronaut framework and to improve the, the support and the integration. It's it's good to say that the, the Micronaut is quite young framework and the Micronaut and the Kubernetes module is much more younger. So we are still trying to improve this module. And uh, if um, any listeners are basically uh, you know using Kubernetes module then from in Micronaut then just uh, and find some uh, missing features or find, find some bugs. So just please guys file an issue and I'll try to do my best to, you know, fix those stuff or, or create some new, new features. Excellent. Excellent. Right. So without further ado, uh, let me, let me maybe talk a little bit about the setup here, right? So, because I've come prepared, I don't know a lot about Kubernetes, but I've, uh, looked into the things. And I have my cloud machine here, the virtual machine that I'm using for my demos. And I installed a Kubernetes. I installed Kind, which is the, the tool that can create a local Kubernetes cluster for me. Uh, and we're gonna use that one if we have at least the opportunity, right? So of course, in any cloud, you, do, you will have the managed Kubernetes service, right? Uh, but I wanted to keep this as simple as possible for myself, right? And it's sort of a little bit neutral not to go and say like oh this is possible only because there is a managed kubernetes uh, engine somewhere or in the particular cloud environment so uh this vm is of course uh in is in the oracle cloud and it's a fairly it's a fairly powerful machine right so it has eight eight cores so that's 16 threads it has a hundred gigabytes of ram so this is my workstation 
Uh, I assume that this should be enough to kind of maybe deploy a couple of small services and explore how it works uh, all together. So uh, yeah, and from this moment, you are in the driver's seat. So tell me, tell me what you what to do. I will go to my streaming setup live streams. Uh, and yeah. this will be our working directory here. Okay, okay. So, um, to just briefly, briefly describe what we are planning to do now is, is as you said, uh, to create a microservice and deploy it to Kubernetes and uh, to use some of the features of uh, Micronaut Kubernetes module. So, be, so I will just very briefly, uh, you know, highlight what the Micronaut Kubernetes module is capable of, but we won't have uh, the time to present all of that. So maybe next time we can look deep, we can look to other features. But you know, to just highlight some of the things, then our Micronaut Kubernetes module basically what what, what it can do is service discovery naturally. Uh, by in Kubernetes, you have native service discovery if, by internal DNS, but uh, for that, you need to, for example, you know, state all the all the service name uh, if you are accessing it through other namespace, etc. But what we do, for example, in Micronaut is that we are downloading all the metadata from services and, and from from endpoints, and we are combining it and, and allowing the the users to you know um, drive the service discovery themselves if there is such a demand, right? But by default, the service discovery works. Then we have something, what we will be actually do, presenting today, and it's a configuration discovery. What it means that, um, as you are aware, you know, Micronaut, when, start, when Micronaut starts, you can configure the Micronaut by using application YAML files. And uh, uh, many times, you know, if you have like 10 services running in Kubernetes and want to, you know, manage the, the configuration for these 10 services, then you can, create one config map and in this config map you, can, you have like basically distributed configuration so this is uh, something that what Micronaut Kubernetes is capable of as well of course uh, there's some secrets discovery so uh, secrets are key part in managing uh, integration with other services right so you can you know provide the services uh, provide the secrets to the service uh, through the Kubernetes secrets and there are also some other features like we have uh, Asia, we have like official Kubernetes integration. It's quite new feature at this moment. So uh, what I mean by that, well, Kubernetes, there's some official Kubernetes Java SDK uh, and uh, we added support for it the way that you can inject the Kubernetes APIs object as regular beans or they are already configured. So uh, you will just add a module and you can like the dependency to, to this module and you can automatically inject the uh, Kubernetes SDK APIs. And of course, we, we plan a lot of other things to do. So we are planning to integrate a, a, a support for Kubernetes operators. So it will be quite easy to write a, to write a Kubernetes operator in Micron. So that's very briefly about what we are basically capable of and what we plan to do in Micronaut Kubernetes. And now back right. to the application. As I mentioned, we will create a microservice. Uh, we will deploy this microservice to Kubernetes and we will present this configuration discovery. So first of all, like, let's start. Uh, you, you have a, how to create a microservice using Micronaut CLI tool. Yeah, yeah, I have the Micronaut tool installed. This is a, of a modern version, 2.4.1. I think this is actually the latest. Uh, and I just do Micronaut create app and I will call it demo, like uh, maybe demo, demo app, demo app. Well, you have to put the package name there. So, no, oh. that never mind. Yes, yes, <laughs> wait, remove the demo. Uh, and we're gonna do the uh, work, work. I'm not sure if this is the correct package, but we'll have that. So we have the, this demo directory and I have my auto commit running. So if you, if you do the exclamation point repo command in the chat, you will get the link um, where this application should appear kind of soon. So I can, I can get into this, right? And what do I, I can add a controller. It's going to be a web application, right? 
and the Kubernetes operates yeah, on the. Yeah, yeah. So add some simple controller. Uh, this Micronaut create controller uh, example, right? Example, maybe yeah. example. Example controller, example controller test. I think that should be fine. So I can I can Gradle W run it or, or build it. Yeah. Right? You can build it, run it, or run tests. The, the nice thing about this Micronaut CLI tool is that it basically generates you the subject and even the test of the subject. Right. So I've built it and it builds. And I also can let me let me just run it because uh, I think this is the simple thing that they can do. And we're gonna just I want to test that it runs. I know that this is kind of sort of a simple and maybe not the most sophisticated. Uh, test but I'm gonna localhost uh, what 8080 yeah and example it was example right oh, I believe so right so we have example response uh, I have this little curl trick sorry uh, curl trick that I can do example response very good our service is operational this is our Guinea peak application and we can then Try to throw it over the wall into the Kubernetes cluster. <laughs> well, first we, we have to, you know, um, the main uh, package that we deliver uh, to Kubernetes is Docker container, right? So uh, now we should like build a Docker container from our application. And what's 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 nice nice thing about Micronaut is that we have the Docker support integrated in our Gradle and Maven plugins. So if you will now just go to some terminal where you don't have running this or kill this one. I will start uh, this. Yeah, and if you will just call Gradle W Docker build, then just that? You, you the Docker. Docker Docker build. Build. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right, so it created see... the Docker file. Oh we are automatically able to... Yeah, yeah. You know we are using a Gradle uh, Docker for Gradle. So um with slight changes right we are because we are trying to micro out to Cuba, provide the users some defaults so you can very easily start using for example docker so now you didn't have to do anything and you are able to build docker image but uh, well because we will be using you know docker for in, in kubernetes uh it would be nice if you would be able to push the docker somewhere so the docker container somewhere so uh now, if you will go to your build Gradle file, we will configure. Right. Uh, I will open this project in my IDE now. So I'm using oh. this virtual virtual machine, right? So I'm gonna use the uh, projector projector thing by JetBrains, uh, and what it will do, it will start me an IntelliJ IDEA instance on that cloud machine. And I will connect to that yeah. through the client application. Uh, you can see that it looks like this. It looks a little bit like this. So there is a handshake and it connects through HTTPS. Uh, and now it renders my UI here in my application. Let me just uh, create this, uh, make this application a bit larger and a bit smaller. I can application, right? And let's go into the presentation mode so we both can see what is happening so we both can see yeah very good presentation mode we both can see what is happening yeah so let's get back to that build gradle file uh yes so build gradle yeah 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 right now now just add a docker docker build docker build task basically right one second yeah. I think something is struggling. I should maybe not do either do this before or not do this, uh, not do this this often. All right, one second. Let me let me give me a moment to just create uh, uh, the thing. All right. So I will, for the sake of speed, I will try to. Wait a second. Wait a second. Well, maybe you want to restart the project a bit because it doesn't behave normally. You know, it's a quite small project now. 
Yeah, maybe we can try this. Projector. Wait, let's do let's do the the VI build gradle while this I will I will go okay. easy on the thing and we're gonna uh, we're gonna create the Docker uh, build, right? Yeah, it's a Docker and build task, yeah, with images variable inside. And right. Uh, okay. Let me just uh, so here I do images, right? Because I want to configure the images and I do just the uh, my and name here, array, right? Yeah, yeah, this is the name of your of your like your Docker Hub uh, registry, right? And yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like I think I think board. something like this, right? So yes, yes. You can basically my... put here more images, depends how many images you want to build, right? Yeah, normally there is like latest tag, version tag, but this is enough. So now, if we will go and do right, if we will, if we will save this this file, right? And I do Docker uh, build again, right? Yeah, we and we can even call directly Docker push. What will basically run? What will basically cause the Docker build will be run as well, but we will also push it to Docker. Right. And of course, you can use any other Docker registries. It's not just about Docker Hub. We 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 are basically taking the credentials from from a Docker configuration. So, okay. So now we have pushed the Docker image to Docker Hub. So now we have the image. We have the application. And uh, now we will wait. Let me we see. Will move Let forward. me see. Let me see. Docker oh. Hub. Docker Hub. I'm, I'm suspicious. It was too easy. Docker Hub, right? Uh, if I just click there and go inside that, I want to see that image in the Docker Hub because that was kind of cool. I mean, I know that my Docker on the command line, I have the Docker, right? And I did the login, right? So it connected to the Docker Hub. Uh, I had to do that before. But you can see, yeah, the demo application was updated just a minute before. So that's kind of cool. How big is this? How big is this image? How large it is? Do you know? Well, I would say a few hundred megabytes. Yeah. But sounds, the application sounds... itself won't be huge. You know, the application itself will be quite small because we don't have much there yet. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, sounds about right. Sounds about right. Uh, here's our projector again, right? It, it's a little bit more responsive. Okay, so we built the Docker image. We pushed it to the Docker hub. Now we need to get it into the Kubernetes. So I feel like I right. would be writing some YAML right now. <laughs> well, I know that exactly. much. <laughs> not exactly, because uh, yes, you are, you, you write for oh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes, there is a uh, uh, lots of uh, YAML files or JFON files that you have to manage, but for our our case, you know, we will we will ease ease these things a bit. That we will use a decorate. Decorate is basically uh, you know uh, a collection of compile time generators, uh, and of course uh, for Kubernetes uh, that will help us to generate these manifest instead of writing them manually. So we can you know have the, the application code and very simple uh, declaration of how it will be deployed to Kubernetes together. I know it's not usable for some maybe critical services, but for our case to just very quickly create an application and deploy it to Kubernetes, it will be very, very, very handy. So we will we will add first this decorate uh, and annotate our application. And, and then we will deploy, we will let the decorate to generate the manifest and then we will use those manifests to uh, deploy our application to your Kubernetes cluster. So first, let's start by adding dependencies to annotate, to decorate. So go to the build uh, Gradle. Yeah, we have you there. And to dependencies task and add an annotation processor. Oh, yes. Annotation processor. OK. OK, that was easy. And that yeah, would be IO and Micronaut. It, now it's decorate. Now it's decorate. So I'll decorate. 
Yeah. Right. How long? Come on. Yeah. And now it's uh, Kubernetes annotations. Annotations. And annotations. yeah, and add the version like two point one point one is the latest version. Right. Very good. Very good. IO and now, Kubernetes annotations. Very good. Yes, yes, and add the also the same uh, dependencies implementation, right? Cool. Oh yes, right. So that will allow us to have the decorated as a dependency and also configure yeah. that as an annotation processor. So yeah, we're gonna slap we, some annotations we, on our classes, and the decorate will use those to generate YAML for me. Yes. Oh, that is neat. That is very neat. Oh. And, and one more thing, we, we will add one more uh, dependency uh, for uh, Micronaut management. It's a module that contains like uh, exposed health and health basically endpoint. Uh, this endpoint is very handy for, for use in Kubernetes because uh, maybe you are aware of that there are, there's something like liveness readiness probe. And based on these probes, uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes decides about the life cycle of the container. What means that basically when uh, the readiness probe is like uh, successfully executed uh, based on the configured policy, then Kubernetes starts sending, you know, traffic to the to the container. And this and very similar it is for uh, uh, liveness probe when based on the results, the Kubernetes may decide to restart the container if it's not responsive, etc. So now, and this is basically everything uh, that's uh, packed, packed in Micronaut management uh, module. So now let's go to your application Java. Right. File. I know, I know I will change this thing. Um, oh, yes. But yeah. The, the, Let never me explain mind. It. Yeah, yeah, you can explain it. Never mind. I don't. That literally, yeah. there is one issue with the decorate thing that we discovered just before we were trying the sample project before, and uh, it's about how it parses the versions and everything. So we need to change those to the single quotes. For the love of anything that is saint, I don't understand why, because it's supposed to be just a string, but uh, it works. It works this way. So it's probably going to be fixed very soon. But for now, this is the the thing that we need to do right so we yeah, wanted to yeah. go to the application sure yeah okay and now I, we will I'm add gonna, the I'm, I'm gonna refresh the I'm dependencies i see that yeah, yeah. and i'm gonna load the gradle changes right so far quite smoothly if you have any questions in the chat uh, to you, Pavel or me, but I know a little bit less about this Kubernetes integration. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, now let's add those annotations. So start by adding annotation named Kubernetes application. Yes. So we make this application and create, I'm just very upset about the performance of this thing right now. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna VI it. Uh, source. Oh, good thing that you have 100 gigabytes of RAM, right? <laughs> yes, I will. I will run. I will run my. Uh, so here, I will do uh, at, Kubernetes at Kubernetes application. Application. This is a little bit a very hand wavy, but we're gonna try to do this. And I know there is a bunch of stuff that we need to put in. Oh. Yes, like also the, let's do not forget to imports, right? So first let's name, let's configure the name of this. Um, because this will be the name of the service and this will become the name of the deployment. So let's let's configure the name field. Right, so okay, name. I don't feel like this will be the most convenient. We're gonna call it demo, right? It's a demo application, we're yeah, gonna call yeah. it demo. Uh, <laughs> Then, uh, then yeah, then let's configure the ports. Okay, ports. Uh, and 
it's at window. ports. It's a new object, basically. So you need to configure it at ports. Oh, yeah. So it's another annotation. And yeah, yeah. Uh, give you the name, like uh, for this annotation for this port. Right. Uh, something like. Wait. Something like this, right? I I hear a lot of clicking, but nothing, nothing. <laughs> okay. Oh, look who's talking. Right. Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ah. copy this part like very <laughs> simply because I don't feel like uh, I don't feel like doing that in VI and and then I'm gonna yes, do sure. the opposite, right? So we're gonna change the okay. image pool policy, right? Can you explain what that is? Yeah. Yeah. Image pool policy basically a strategy how the Docker images are basically pulled from the registry. There are you know three on policies, one is, is always, which means Every time the deployment restarts or new pod is spawned, then we are always trying to pull the image, then use the one that is on a local Docker registry. And this is this is the policy we will use because we will restart our pod several times. So we don't have to increase the version or do some other magic. Then we will use this policy. Also, we configure the liveness and readiness probe, probes like, uh, like uh, mentioned previously. Previously, regard with regards to the micronaut management um, module, and uh, this will basically, and we will check it later in a, in, a, in a while. This will basically generate the service and deployment Kubernetes manifest. But before we will continue, we will add one more annotation that will help decorate to uh, evaluate the correct name of the image, because obviously. Decorate is not integrated now much into the micro, but I will promise that I'm promising you and all the guys uh, in, a, in a stream that uh, this will change very soon. So now add annotation, add uh, build, docker build. Let me just do that. Docker build like that. Yes, like that and configure the field named group. Which oh, group. basically says like group, yeah. Let's start with group. This what is me, is right? Group is my name. name. Yeah. yeah, and let's right. configure even the Docker Docker image name again, the demo, so name. So name uh, demo. Demo. Very good. Is that it? Should be it. Yeah, is right? that it? And now we have to copy here of oh, oh I will I will tell you what the imports? Uh, okay, yeah, let's do this. Import. Let's do this. There are a couple of questions in the chat. And, uh, and I want to address them uh, and I want you to address them as well. So thank you for the questions. I see them. I'm, I promise that I will find a moment to ask them. So Marianne Trapp asking, is asking how secrets would be managed with this Kubernetes integration. So if you can go into maybe the secret management a little bit for like half a minute, I will restart my projector and try to get the imports done. Yeah, well, secrets are basically injected as any other properties. There's no no much uh, deal to it, right? We take the secrets, we uh, you know uh, decode them because they are encoded in uh, resources. But of course, uh, you need to the, the application needs to have uh, correctly configured the role access binding, right? Because so so the applicant so the account, the service account under, under which the application is running needs to have the ability to read the credentials in the namespace from where you want to, you know, uh, read it. But once this is this is there, you can basically inject those secrets. You can specify which secrets you want to inject and those secrets will be injected uh, because, you know, and and, the, and it, it, it's just purely about then how the secrets are uh, structured in your secret Kubernetes manifest. If you will, if you will check our Micronaut uh, Kubernetes documentation, there is a whole place about a whole like paragraph, huge paragraph actually that describes how to achieve this. Right. Um, at first, it, this this feature needs to, needs to be like specifically enabled because it's not uh, it's not something we want to like enable by default. Like and and. Once this is done, you can either inject all secrets or really you can fill, include or exclude some, or you can uh, select or filter the secrets based on labels or based on pod labels, because pod labels are, you know, uh, used a lot in uh, when using the helm charts. So you can do this as well. 
plus uh, it, you wouldn't want to do this thing you could uh, because sometimes you know um, the applications doesn't have the, the permissions to read secrets right because it can be quite uh, uh, you know um, risk to let applications read secrets so there's there are times when the secrets are mounted as uh, volumes so this is this is pro this is possible as well uh, to use in the Micronaut application. So uh, in, in the guideline, you will find out how to basically read secrets that are mounted uh, as, as a volume. So you will just specify path uh, in the container where these secrets are mounted. So that's it. Right, very good, very good. Saurab, Saurab is asking, can we have application read ports and other values from the environment? Mm, I assume I that this configuration about, uh, like about the configuration of the things. Uh, I think I don't understand, like uh, whether we, we what, could, you, could you read once again, please? Can we have the application read port and etc. from the environment? Ah, you mean like you would configure the uh, Port of the of the application where it will be started. Well, I think yeah, it's possible. Uh, why not? <laughs> we will for, for the for the port binding. Actually, you can use uh, Micronaut, you know, uh, expression language in uh, for configuration when you can like, you know, declare the port or you can declare the uh, environment variable with colon and declare a default port. So yeah, that's, that should be possible actually. Right. Yeah, I would assume so. The application is get gets deployed in the pod, right? And that pod is actually a Docker image. So like you can read configuration there and uh, just now, a little bit later, we're going to show how you can read the configuration from the config maps in the Kubernetes yes. cluster, right? So yes. I assume that with the combination of those two, it should be like a, a it quite straightforward be, task. And well, it, it's, it's a bit of combination, maybe what what the, what the, uh, what that you said or asked. Well, there can be a problem like you know uh, these Docker, um, the Docker ports maybe have to be exposed, so you should have you no know, where like like where is this application running? Like like what's the port binding? What I'm not sure that it is, so I would have to try. But I never basically was, uh, you know, dynamically changing the port number in, in Docker containers, especially in Kubernetes, because this is basically something that's quite, you know, abstracted in Kubernetes. You can reuse the same application with the same port, and the difference is just that you are exposing it the on different, you know, uh, exposing services on different ports, etc. So, well. Maybe I will need to know more how to how what's what's the what's the merit of the question. Right. Very good. Thank okay. you. And Vila Jonah is asking, is this decorate? And this one I can take. Yes, this is decorate. Those yes. are the annotations from the decorate project. Uh, and now they're imprinted here. They're here, so now we can maybe see them in action. Okay, so go to terminal and run Gradle V or Gradle W compile Java. What should generate us the Kubernetes manifest. Right, so I do Gradle W compile Java. That's the most obvious target to run. Uh, do, oh. do, do. I th think you have some issues there with syntax. Uh, load file system changes. Oh, come on. Let me just import the classes oh. again. <laughs> See, this is like, don't laugh at me. On the last stream, on the last stream, that was such a, such a, like, funny situation. It was when I was using the VI in the terminal in IDEA, right? So in the integrated terminal. And then the projector wouldn't send the escape correctly. So I was stuck in VI and I couldn't mm. exit. That was that was just like the classic rookie mistake, and I had to close the terminal window uh, okay. to get exit VA. Right. So we processed that. We generated some files. Uh, I see the YAML. Let me just go and open that. Yeah. 
let me just quickly it sits in the build so which is like a little bit unfortunate classes and you can see there are a ton of things in there uh meta inf wait not no java meta inf what uh classes yeah, java he... main what classes java main java meta inf Java main meta in hmm? maybe maybe uh decorate didn't pick no, the this change is the wrong the decorate. File this is decorate. so maybe yeah and the thing is like by default this is not the best location i would assume because those files are ignored by the version control system i don't know i'm not 100 on board with the location but i like that i didn't have to write this file by hand yeah yeah the location would be unfortunate, but actually it follows what it did, right? Because this this is delivered like it's a result of some processing and the, the, the source of truth is basically the annotation and not the YAML file. This is basically an output of some processing. So, but yeah, it generated the service and it generated the deployment and decorate supports, even uh, generation of other things, not just the Kubernetes manifest, but there's an open sheet, there's a tech tron. There's a lot of other stuff, so feel free to check it. Right. So we have a service, which is our application in Kubernetes terms, right? And yeah. we have a deployment, which is which is a a deployment. Well, deployment <laughs> is is through deployment you tell the Kubernetes like how to create and modify instances, how to deliver new, uh, you know, a new version of containers. It basically manages two important objects, it's a replica set and and pots, and uh, it's kind of an abstraction on top of these two, top of these two, two, two like Kubernetes resources. But, uh, right, you know, right. And the, the pot is the instance of our application, right? So this is the sort yes. of the container that yes, uh, yes. we can start. Not many and... people know, but it, uh, it's, it's an acronym for point of deployment, actually. Yeah, it's oh, very good. point of yeah. deployment. Right, but, okay. So we have the YAML. And we can apply that YAML, right? Yeah, let's do that. Let's see uh, what we will do. So we do kubectl, and then we apply. Yeah, kubectl. Uh, we can, you, I can show you. See, there are no pods. There is nothing running in my cluster, right? So if I do kubectl, and then I apply, and I give the file, and I just need to give this file, right? Yeah. Uh, copy path, path from the content root, and since we are here in the content root, so this is the build classes, everything, all good. We apply and we created the service demo and deployment apps demo in our Kubernetes cluster. Yes. Now check whether the pods are running and started. Right. So we so, have just one. Pod, right? Yes. It's getting started. Cool. Right. So minus like dash W will make it will make it continuously monitor this and output when the status changes, right? Yeah, yeah. Funny, the status is not changing, right? <laughs> yeah, it is funny. Like, <laughs> it's not it's not that funny. It's not like haha -ha funny, but like it's a more like funny as in interesting. Um, yes. Well, let's check what, what's happening there. So run kubectl describe pot. Describe pot. Uh, Wait, one one pot, right? And I need to do the ID. Yeah. Okay. Ah, so our probes are failing. Well, something's happening inside our cluster, inside our container. So let's investigate why is that happening. Right. Can I do logs? Yeah, Should yeah. I... Let's do logs. Oh wait, I copied something. Um... Right, so we have this container. I will copy the ID and we'll do kubectl logs demo application. The application has started. Interesting. The application has okay. started, but we don't have the readiness probe uh, available, or something didn't run correctly. Yeah, let you know. Let's let's. Uh... Let's execute into the container and call it ourselves. So we will see what's happening there. Here's a here's an idea. 
Pavel. So tell me, when we applied those things, did we have to rebuild the Docker container and push it to the Docker Hub? Well, we did not. Well, that's a good point. So yeah, I think I think I'm onto something. I'm <laughs> guy. Uh, so we need to do Docker push. Yeah. Uh, right. So well, we do Gradle W Docker push, right? Because that will build our application with the Kubernetes configuration and the readiness probes and everything, and it will push it to the Docker Hub, and then the Kubernetes yeah. cluster will pull that from the Docker Hub, and 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 deploy that, and hopefully that one will have the probes configured. Well, I hope so. Well, I hope as I well. mean, I'm, I'm very proud that I got this before you got this. So I'm, I'm very happy with the stream today. Somebody complimented <laughs> the, the, the setup and the music as well. Thank you, Villadrona. Uh, I'm indeed extremely happy with this. Right. So do we need to reapply this? Uh, we don't have to reapply it because we didn't change the manifest. We will just restart the port. So just run kubectl, roll out. out. Restart, deploy, and deployment and demo. demo. Yeah. Right. Very good. So, how do you manage? How do you manage those commands? Do you have like a series of bash scripts, or do you have like? It's just it's just when you you run it like thousand times, it's it's just like uh, you know some <laughs> some poet or something like that. It's it's like a poem, right? You, you just learn it and you will remember it by until end of your life so yeah uh, not right. a habit okay okay so, so we restarted let's let's and check the, the, the port whether it started yes ah uh, we'll see it's ready we have to restart that's interesting what's happening ah uh, oh, no okay so that's not the one so it's terminating and now the hour one is running so if you will running without the w we will see there just one pot great great so now let's try to and call it right oh we are quite actually quite late so maybe we will finally add the the discovery okay we will go and yes. proceed yeah. and we will find this we will add the configuration discovery so first of all go to the build gradle and let's add finally our micronaut kubernetes discovery client Right. So I just go to the build gradle file, and this is now the first thing that actually makes Micronaut and Kubernetes kind of know about each other together, right? Because before actually, we just in Micronaut, in Micronaut we know. Oh, we know. Well, uh, that's nice about Micronaut. You don't have to use a bunch of dependencies to deploy the stuff somewhere, right? By default it will run because we have the plugin and through the plugin we are configuring a lot of stuff and now we will add finally something that we will use for the integration if you don't need those integration you don't need this mod so yeah uh we have the dependency that's great refresh the dependencies and let's uh, proceed to your to the uh controller oh yeah right it's scanning something it's never been a problem before to scan like various things but today it's scanning right it also shows me that my internet connection is unstable so which is which is on me but it was good before it was decent before we tried that uh so let me just very quickly i don't know why why it's happening like this right so uh but i'm gonna just do this i blame gradle to be honest like this happens with gradle yeah Sure, I don't know. Course. Like something, something <laughs> is just not not hundred percent correct with the setup. Let's see. It's starting the connection. Until it's, it's, it's not my crowd, I'm okay. Yes, of course, of course. Uh, it's uh, it's almost like look, look, we are back. The dependencies are there, and we can also go to. Oh, we need. We don't need the application, uh, right? I don't think the dependency is there. Is it? Is there? Yeah, are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like that's okay, the so... uh, what? Oh. No, 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 no. Go back. Well, 
right? Go back. We need the example controller, right? Yes. Yes. Let's go to the example controller. And let's tweak it a bit so the controller will return the, you know, uh, injective properties that we will be downloaded from config map. So let's add some new endpoint. Let's call it like uh, example. Right. So we're going to just have a new method here, right? And we're going to oh, yeah. map it to config and the parameter we will take the key of the configuration that we want to return just for demo purposes. And we're going to take the application context and then get that key uh, or return nothing if there is nothing by that key, right? So, and then what I need to do, yeah. I just need to do the application context. I need to create like a field that, yes. for that. So just, I know that uh, context <laughs> that oh, was a, a surprising to see like I think this is my internet I I I'm very sorry for people watching I hope you actually get the like not a jerky stream but like a normal uh what Ooh. right this is on me wait a second um all right are we gonna see Ta -da -na 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 -na. Pavel will temporarily no. not see anything, but hopefully everyone else will see everything. Inject. See, now I'm like a, like a professional racer. I can type things and they show up immediately. I blame Zoom now. I don't even blame Brain Gretel. So we inject the application context uh, and we have this configuration file here, right? Uh, and uh, what next do we need to do? We need to well, create. I don't know where you are, but you, you need to edit the. You need to annotate the controller by refresh. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Uh, refreshable. I have the refreshable. Here. What the refreshable? Just for, for the listeners, the ref, what the refreshable about is that uh, this makes the beam like listen for the refreshes that happens inside the uh, application and in context, right? So once there's something changed, this beam will be like recreated. That's one thing. And also you can, you know, configure the, configure the, uh, listen, listening for very specific properties, but well, let's have it this way. So now we, uh, we are having this, this configuration and now, just... right now we need to create a file, right? Uh, where we're going to enable the config client. Well, first we need to, you know, enable the config client. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's create a bootstrap YAML file. What's the bootstrap YAML file? Well, we if there's a bootstrap YAML file on a, on a, on a uh, class path, then the Micronaut will create a very tiny and small bin context just for the purpose of obtaining some, you know, additional data to spawn and create the final application context. So this, right. and by this bootstrap YAML, we are basically saying like, okay, uh, and like, uh, yeah, config client, yeah, we put it already there. So by, by this, we are saying like, when this is there, enable all configuration clients, and we have one in my uh, Kubernetes module. And right. that will basically download the config maps. And if there is some, you know, demand for some specific properties for, you know, creation of beans, etc., then my will use those, um, properties from the Kubernetes. So yeah, we have this thing ready. And now what we will do, let's go and let's create some config map. And so let's go back to the terminal and let, let's create, uh, or maybe first build Docker Docker image. So we have the Docker image ready. Okay. Uh, that was Gradle. Docker push, yeah. Docker push. Oh, Gradle W. I don't know whether you have Gradle there. No, mm -hmm. I don't. Right, so, and to be honest, like, so Docker push currently pushes the Docker hub, but it can be any Docker registry, right? It doesn't have yes, to be Docker uh, hub. Yeah, yeah, just place it what, whatever you like. You can put there like a complete, uh, you know, URL to your private registry. It's up to you. Right, okay. So we we are done with that. And then we okay. need to and now create let's the create config some... map. Yeah, let's create a config map. So let's create it from some YAML files. So create a new YAML file here, like B, 
example or demo or whatever. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. And I and just put my configuration like, here. Yeah. Someone is connecting to this Zoom actually. This is fine. Uh, just people who are connecting to Zoom, please don't uh, like. <laughs> you can you can like you can be here as a voice, but uh, let's not uh, interrupt a lot. Uh, okay, create we'll some there. simple property. Yeah. Okay, like I don't know. Okay, uh, enemies, and I will do cheat, and I will do level, right? Yeah, and we're gonna do it here. Hello, world. Yeah, because I'm not excellent with <laughs> with the configuration things, right? That is a YAML. I think this is a valid YAML, right? Yeah, um, seems. <laughs> so that's my config, right? And that's my local file. I also need to put this file into the Kubernetes. Yeah, yeah. So now just type kubectl create config map. Config Name map. Config map. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Name every config. every resource in Kubernetes, I need to give names, right? Yes, every resource has a name. Right, okay. Uh, uh, dash dash from file. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I recognize and I do the file, right? So yeah. now we will instruct to make that config map in yeah. the Kubernetes. So now if I want to edit this, I would do kubectl edit. edit config map. And you can even use not you, you, if you want to you know uh, save some time save save some time you can type just cm like a short shortcut for config maps like cm yeah and demo config map. Okay, okay. So now we don't need the file, but it's right here and it's it's incorrect, right? It's like weird. No, no it's, it's it's okay. I believe. Are it's, you sure? Well, I think. Well, the, okay, okay. You, okay. you, you are the Kubernetes so professional here, so it's. Oh. <laughs> If you say it's okay, then... Okay, and now let's go and restart. Restart the container because we already pushed it. So uh, it's kubectl rollout. I don't, I don't think this is correct. Yeah, I think I think uh, it could be okay. We'll see very soon. <laughs> okay, so I, I do rollout restart, right? Kubectl yeah. rollout. Rollout. Restart, yeah, restart deployment yeah. yeah demo right restart very good yeah. now let's let's check the the logs of our QC of our uh, okay nothing so go and check let check the logs so kubectl logs and no get without get yes yeah yeah and we take the new not one. That one no that one that one that's the new one the new one here. What I can see here that it resolved configuration. Yes, from two basically uh, two sources, and uh, one is definitely our our config map. So now what we we, we have exposed that, that through a controller. So now let's let's port forward our service so we can call the service from like here from localhost. Right. So let me just verify that I understand correctly here. So. The configuration got into the context, right? Uh, and we're gonna expose this, and now we're gonna try to access this URL here. Yeah. And to do so, I need to kind of get a tunnel from inside the Kubernetes cluster to the outside because I'm on the outside, right? So I want to access it from the outside. Internally, it has some uh, like an IP port and like uh, the ports yes. open. And it's all managed, but from outside, I need to I need to kind of run a command to get that. Okay, okay. Um, it's kubectl. I I know kubectl. Uh, yeah. Port. port double what? dash. No yes. one dash. No, right no. Just... <laughs> and now just service slash demo eighty eighty colon eighty. Yeah. Here. Right. So we forward the port into that service, and this is our local oh, machine. The other way around, we forward a port from the service to the machine. But yeah, right. Okay. Mind. So, but eighty is the internal port, right? Because 
That's it the point. The port of the service where the service is running, like in, in Kubernetes, like the port right. of the service. And 8080 okay. is your local uh, port because. Okay, yeah. I see. I see. Open HTTP client. We can see that configuration. Uh, yeah. Enemies, enemies of the state, enemies, enemies. Uh, what mm. was it? Cheat, Cheat level. Level. Yeah, and and you have to update the port as well. Yeah. That was eighty eighty, right? Okay. Yes. So gonna run it. Hit it. Hit it. All right. We see the hello world back here. Oh, that is actually hell, yeah. quite spectacular. That yeah. is actually quite spectacular. Uh, because for some reason, I didn't expect this to work on the first try. <laughs> right. Okay. So can I can I edit this now? Right? Yeah, if yeah I, let's try to edit. If I just quickly do the edit. Yeah. Right, so and, and maybe, well, this is very unfortunate format of the, of the YAML file. I mean, uh, I mean, yes. Let's do this properly. Because no, right? it didn't. It didn't. It, it just escaped the new. new oh, okay. Right. Okay. Let's it should try. Be it. Fine. It should and, be fine. It should be fine. It should be fine. Will if we have the right amount of spaces there. But let's hope right, we have. Enemies. Uh, cheat. Right. Yeah. Was it cheat? Yeah. Level. Level. And then we had this here. What it was Hello World before, and uh, we're gonna have. Long live Micronaut. Okay, but I know I don't know what. Well, you know you what? created basically new object there. Uh, you didn't change the level. Uh, you there's one more you know uh, new line. So in between level and long live the Micronaut, you created another you know level. Uh, Another, right. Another okay. Level. Okay. I'm. I'm here. I'm professional in VI, so I can just do this. Right. Uh, yes. <laughs> this is. This is perfect. I don't know why it shows in that format. Do I need to do anything else? So I edited my config files. Right. And yeah. now, because of yeah. the refreshable annotation, I assume that it will be picked up automatically. Yes. Yes. Okay. We can try this. This goes some you know amount of time in between when this is this is propagated but let's try yeah oh my god oh my god we see the long live micronaut we see the we see the changed values so that means that configuration change was picked up uh and the micronaut reloaded that being recreated that been uh to note that there was a configuration change right yeah. you know normally what you do normally is that you have the application yaml file with some uh, configuration, but you will take this configuration from this application YAML file and externalize this configuration to the config map. So that be, that means that if you have like ten instances of the of the same service, you can manage the configuration from one, one place. So that's that's what it is basically for. So uh, that's that's it. Uh, but I, I I think we don't have much more time to present like the service discovery. So if you like, we can leave it for the next time and we can continue building this service so we can present the service discovery and maybe or why why maybe we can also present the, the secret discovery if there's there was a question related to it so uh, i'm open for do this yeah yeah i think that is a good plan we are currently indeed at the the, the top of the hour so uh we we showed the configuration discovery i'm very happy that actually in the end it were it all kind of worked out uh, because before it was struggling a little bit with the internet connection. Uh, I, I'm very grateful for you, Pavel, for uh, joining me here and also preparing this uh, demo application for me and the explanations. Uh, I feel myself more comfortable with Kubernetes and at least the basic deployment steps, right? I understand the concepts a little bit more and I'm sure, I'm sure that the service discovery would work in a like a similarly straightforward manner uh, with with some sort of a web client. We should do a session on that eventually. Uh, but at this time, I thank you very, very much. Uh, yep. And I, 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 yeah, I think we are, we will wind this down and start moving towards the next session. Do you have any questions for Pavel? Uh, uh, maybe we can take a minute out of 
the next if there are questions in the chat. I don't know if, if we do have questions in the chat or not. Currently not. There are some people thanking you. Thank you, Marwan, uh, for the kind feedback. It was interesting for me as well. Uh, yeah, and we'll we'll do those demos further. Maybe on this application, maybe a little bit on a different use case. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, like Thank all the guys on the stream and uh, see you next time. Right. Thank you very much.